Okay, blog number six or seven or something along those lines. Um, I'm making this one purely because I saw so much unexpected wildlife uh, in Cat Bar and it was it was completely bizarre. Um, so I kind of wanted to to share it. Um, yeah, so I mean, recently actually I've been to Fancy Pan, which is the the highest mountain in Vietnam, which I guess was was more of an experience and probably would probably make quite an interesting blog. Um, I'll sure and I'll put that down uh, into words in the future. Um, but yeah, so so Cat Bar Island, uh, only place in the world where the white-headed langer or Cat Bar langer lives. Um, there, there are about sixty of them in the wild left in like total, um, which is which is completely bizarre. Um, and like seeing one wasn't even though I'm always thinking about wildlife, like it wasn't even something that was on my mind uh, when I went there. Um, I was just excited at the thought of going to Monkey Island, which is where the macaques live. Um, I think they're crab eating macaques, so I do need to check that. Uh, which are very very used to humans, and I was quite cautious about. Um, I like to think that I'm not a wimp, and I actually just have a healthy respect for animals. So I did I did get my phone out and take a few photos. Um, I did not get the banana out of my bag because I felt I was asking for trouble. Um, someone, I saw someone feed them a banana and they're just kind of... Some of that I feel is a little, a little bit risky. Um, uh, but yeah, there's, and I've got, I got quite a sweet photo of a, a, a sort of a half circle of people um, sort of standing around the monkey, uh, all like looking at it and, um, you know, which I captioned with, with, I expect you're wondering why I brought you all here, the kind of classic most Dungeons and Dragons type thing. Um, it would have been much better photo if the monkey had had its had its arms up. But um, yeah, there you go. So so they're they're pretty uh, pretty exciting to see just because they run around. But they're just fun animals to see. Like uh, um, I never seen a wild monkey before. Uh, so that was ace. And um, after that, basically, I was on a kind of cruise with a couple of friends to Monkey Island to another place to go kayaking. Then just through the bay where it's really beautiful. Um, and at the place where we went kayaking, uh, for for a start, there were there were sea eagles and getting increasingly good views of these really quite cool looking birds that are sort of brown. Some of them have kind of white bits on their wings. Couldn't tell you for the life of me what kind of sea eagle they are. Um, other people kept not believing me when I said eagle. I uh, I don't really know why because like when it's that size and you're in that climate, it's I don't know buzzards don't really eat fish. Um, it's an eagle, but uh, yeah, it was it was cool to see those, but um. It was totally bizarre. We just kind of kayaked around this bay, and then one of the Vietnamese guys kind of pointed up to this, you know, very vertiginous um, hillside. You know, typical kind of Vietnamese limestone cast scenery. I wonder how many times I'll use that phrase in in blogs to come. Um, absolutely covered in completely in in trees and plants, and um, there was just this movement, and uh, you know. Every now and then it would stop or it would disappear, but but every, it would come back and, and it was almost looked like a cat. So the, a langer monkey is um, it's black, although these ones are. Uh, do Google image search cat bar langer because um, the babies are bright orange, which I totally I knew there was a monkey that looked like that, but I didn't know it was this one. Um, it's really weird looking to see like the the babies sort of clinging on to the to the adults. Um, yeah. So, so cat bar langer, it's got a disproportionately long tail. It's like the snow leopard of, of the monkeys, um, and yeah, it, it would. Well, it, you'd just be looking at a bit of movement going. Is that how can I even tell that that's a monkey? And then it would, at one point, it literally jumped from one tree to another. Uh, and we saw two of them. We were able to watch them for about five minutes. So I've seen like three percent of the world's cat bar langers. It was, it was. It was kind of, I was in a in a kayak with another um, someone I just met on the boat, and I don't think he really appreciated like how sort of special and unusual that was. It was really really cool. Um, and then uh, the boat had just kind of docked near where this family were living, basically, and, the, and fishing, and they had their own fish in sort of netted off uh, areas. So their their house, their hut was just kind of floating on these wooden platforms, uh, and they also had these little fish ponds, but made of nets and wood. Um, with fish floating in them, well, swimming in them, and uh, this this tiny, very two tiny, very cute Vietnamese four-year-old girls kind of pointed at the the, the, uh, the ponds like, look at that, and I, and I walked over and there was this enormous grouper swimming around, and it was um, it, not quite as long as I am tall, um, but you know pr probably pushing four and a half to five feet, um, and I kind of went, 
Oh god, I hope one of them doesn't fall in because I don't, <laughs> I don't want to have to rescue someone from a grouper. Um, and if if you go in the uh, grouper fish are a weird internet rabbit hole to go down. Like if you Google them, you'll start. There's a lot of people um, posting footage of them like eating sharks and stuff. Um, so this one, I don't know if it was that quite that size, but it was just a scary looking huge fish. Um, though though. Uh, we talked a bit to the guides and they did actually say that the family was just kind of keeping it there because like people like me are interested not and they're not actually going to eat it um kind of sad existence for it, i guess uh swimming around with these tiny tiny fish about this size um but yeah it was was just and then they dropped a sort of a little fish in there and it kind of came up and sort of they, they loom slowly closer kind of out of the the murky water and then and they just kind of suddenly close the gap and and you know they, they don't really have teeth they just swallow things which is a really a really scary idea like just the idea of things in the water that like can navigate this obviously we can swim sort of on the surface of the water but we can't really hold our breaths and just the idea that like the stuff down there and that there's like another dimension is a really scary thought like i guess i don't know i think i think I'm very, for someone who likes animals, I'm very scared of animals. Like, I you know I talked about in my cook for blog about, like, the eyes and sort of looking at me out of the darkness in, in cook for at night. But it's, it's like, if you're in the forest, you kind of, you know that everything, I guess something could be in a tree, but generally everything is sort of two-dimensionally to the side or in front or, about, or behind you. If you were swimming, then there's... Stuff could be below you as well. It's I, I don't know. I think this is like an interesting idea to think about. That's why I'm keeping this in this increasingly rambly blog. Um, wildlife is great. It's great, isn't it? Like this is this is it's well. It's not why I travelled to Vietnam, but um, it's it's certainly one of the things that excites me about being in Asia. Um, yeah, and so so after that, we just I was just like kind of a bit overwhelmed by seeing a cat bar langer um, and. And uh, you know, sea eagles always nice and neat. Um, after that, we were cruising through the bay and um, just looking over the sort of the scenery. And then there was this thing; it almost looked like kind of sparks of like bits of oil flying off a pan or something. Kind of came in, it almost as if it had been shot out of the water, came da up and down and in very quickly. And it was, um, and they were flying fish. And I think one of my friends actually saw those um, recently in Cat Bar, so I should have known. But for some reason, I, I didn't even think that they lived in that part of the world. So that was another kind of exciting thing to add to it. Um, see, so like fly only only for a couple of seconds. And then in, in about the same place, um, a few minutes later, that there was just this enormous kind of wet slap on the water. Um, it was like a beaver uh, in the way that they like hit the water with their tails. And um, I looked around and there was a ray and it was almost, must have been close to two feet wide. Um, I don't know if that could have been a manta if they are uh, too big or if it could have been a young one or there are, there are probably hundreds of different types or at least tens of different types of rays in the world but um yeah i've never seen a wild ray before it was again it was such a random thing and it just kind of jumped out of the water um you know came down jumped out came down again and then disappeared um yeah just utterly bizarre like i probably shouldn't encourage people to visit cat bar just just keep it as wild as it currently is because it's it's such a beautiful place um and then to the national park. We didn't really see so much in the Rasmus National Park. There was a little tiny bird with a very red head and face. It looked very cool. Um, it wasn't a chicken. That sounded like a chicken now, but it was, no, it was a little like tree creepery type thing. Um, yep. And then, then we went for a swim and I kind of almost swallowed what I thought were little fish. I was just kind of swimming into the shallows onto the beach and then these kind of all started hitting these like little shrimps, which was quite weird. Um, and then we're just walking around Catbar Town on Sunday morning. I saw a shrike. Um, not the most popular of animals. Uh, yeah, you've probably seen them on planet Earth recently. They're called butcher birds. They, I didn't see its its forms where they put the put the things that they kill. Um, but shrikes, they're quite pretty in themselves. They're um, you know, and it's kind of unfair to like assume that they're nasty creatures just because they, they kind of store their food in quite a gruesome way. Um, so yeah, that was cool. Yeah, so there's just like literally, there's not a particularly. It, I, I think it's an interesting vlog. Um, oh, it's very, very rambly. Um, oh, I don't even know if I'm gonna do more. I'm gonna do. I'll probably do one out either about Fancy Pan or uh, just, just like a kid, just another funny short one, I guess. Um, so yeah, uh, 
jacknutchins.wordpress.com is um, is the website. Uh, yeah, jacknutchins.wordpress.com. I've got blogs. There, there are I think a lot better composed than these. Um, and uh, yeah, I'm also on Kindle now, uh, which is pretty exciting. My uh, my creative writing group put together an anthology, and um, you can get that on Kindle. It's called The Silent One by Bank Writers. Um, you actually probably see my name in the description. Bank Writers or Bank Street Writers. Uh, great writing group from Sheffield. Okay, so yeah, thanks very much for watching. This has come to ten and a half minutes already. Um, I need to, to shorten these down quite a lot. But um, yes, uh, thanks for listening. I hope it was interesting. Um, that, uh, yeah, I shouldn't encourage people to go to Cat Bar. <laughs> it should, it should just stay, stay like it's already really, really touristy. Um, but yeah, if you're in North Vietnam, you should probably go to Cat Bar. Okay, goodbye.